We are back at 638. Rich Hebronic is here from Home Depot in Grand Island with tips on how to keep your lawn looking great. We head into the dog days of summer. We've already gone through some heat. Now, this, we've had some moisture early in the summer, but starting to get a little dry. So, the key now, stuff you can do to sort of make it easier in the spring, even for you. Is that right? Uh, yeah, what you can do now is uh, we have a product called Scott's Summer Guard. Okay. And what that does is that establishes uh, the roots in your grass. A little bit stronger, so it makes it a little more drought tolerant mm -hmm. and resistant to the to the dry conditions that we have going on right now. When I go a long time without <clears throat> mowing my lawn, I justify it to my neighbors as saying I'm trying to get <laughs> deeper root gain. Is that valid? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, it doesn't help me. Nice okay. try, but yeah, so I'll go three weeks. Your neighbors aren't watching. I'm just trying to get deeper root growth going there, but you're saying that's a fallacy. There. That is a fallacy. Okay. However, it is a good idea in the heat of the summer to when you do cut your grass to gr to cut it maybe slightly longer mm -hmm. than you normally would because what what that does is that holds the moisture then uh, down into the soil a little bit more. It doesn't have as much sun exposure when the grass is a little bit longer. So okay. it doesn't dry out the top soil as quickly. Go ahead. Those, I was going to say those strong roots don't just help with drought conditions, but also help protect against long, lawn grub. I, that's the issue is the strong roots aren't as affected. Yes, they, it, the, the strong roots help protect um, against, you know, number one, like we've been talking about, the drought conditions. But it also promotes, like you mentioned earlier, Chris, the stronger uh, growth in the springtime. It keeps those roots growing healthy. So you don't have to start from scratch and mm -hmm. maybe replant your lawn then in the spring or in the fall. Shall we brought up the grubs? We've got some stuff here for that as well. What am I looking at in my lawn? How do I know I've got a grub problem? You know, what you'll notice when you have a grub problem is you'll have brown patchy spots uh, in your yard. You might notice that your yard is a little bit rough because yep. the rubs will burrow. But mainly the, the, the brown uh, patchy spots that you'll find in your, in your lawn. Because what the grub does is it eats the roots of the grass, and then the grass dies and turns brown. Oh, and I see. But it's, and it's happening underneath. It happens underneath. I'm not underneath. going to necessarily see any of these, in, uh, they're not insects, I guess, but whatever they are, creepy crawlies <laughs> uh, around in there because they have burrowed underneath, as you said. Yes, there. they have burrowed underneath. Another sign, and I don't know this to be fact, it might be fallacy, but another sign that I've always heard is when you see a lot of... Um, white moths flying around in your yard, oh, okay. that that's a sign of grubs. I see. Okay. So look, for, sometimes I've seen that when I've mowed mm -hmm. and you'll see them popping up yes. there. So it tells you, I guess I better get some grub stuff <laughs> happening as well. And the, the best time to apply the grub killer is early spring. Oh, I early see. Spring, okay. Yep. So note that as well. Now, Scott's wants to, with this, with this food, tell me that I need to be doing it about four times. Yet I have people saying, don't throw so much nitrates on. It's bad for the water and everything else. What's the happy balance here that uh, keeps me from falling into a fertilizer marketing campaign versus <laughs> what's really needed for my lawn? That's always tricky. It depends on your lawn. But generally, if you fertilize once really good in the spring, okay. you know, when, you're, when your grass begins to grow real vigorously and you're ready to mow it for the first time, mow it your first time, put on a good uh, weed and feed, and then you want to follow up every four to six weeks with, oh, with wow. a nice... Uh, with a nice uh, lawn fertilizer. Really? So that mm -hmm. often then as well? That right. often, but a key to that too is keeping plenty of moisture on your yard. Okay. Uh, you can't over fertilize, especially in drought conditions like this. If you over fertilize, your lawn's going to burn. So, uh, you, you know, if you fertilize every four to six weeks, water your yard, uh, get it about an inch of moisture a week, should be plenty sufficient to, nice, to have a nice, healthy, green, lush yard. Okay, when you want to kill the stuff, then you brought the Roundup here as well. Don't put this on your lawn, <laughs> though, right? This yeah. is for areas outside, your planters and stuff like that, that you're trying to get rid of stuff, right? Well, yep, the, the Roundup is, it'll kill everything. Right, um, yeah. So you want to use Roundup in driveways and rock gardens. Um, you, you, gotta be, you can use it in landscaping if you have rocks, but you have to be very careful because it is yeah, it's very deadly to plants. Yes. In the lawn, what do you recommend? Like a weed be gone sort of situation? Weed be gone. Is that better for your clover, things like that? It is better for your clover. And you know, there's different types of weed be gone too. There's liquid and there's granular. Um, liquid will work faster because okay. it's, it's already liquid to go right down into the soil and get into the roots. Uh, where granular, you apply it, you have to then water it so the granulars dissolve into the soil. Okay, and we're talking that we've got our lawn already established. If we need a little help, it's the seed going too for it, us here. Yes, if you need help, a uh, little help going, you have some bare patchy spots. You know, the best time to try seed or to, to replant some seed is early spring. 
when your grass is just beginning to emerge, mm -hmm. or early fall. And you've got to water like crazy on water that, Water like right? crazy. Keep the topsoil wet so the seeds uh, can germinate and come through the soil. This is a sunny mix, but I've got shade spots that I have tried different things on that include, say, four shade areas. I've had mixed results. Is there? Have you found a better one for shade stuff? That's a tough one, though. It is it? a tough one. However, we do have products uh, of grass seed that will work best in shade conditions for you. All uh, right. the, the grass seed has been bred appropriately, uh, so it will work well in the shade. Rich, give a plug for the store there. All right, we're at 911 Deers Avenue uh, in Grand, or excuse me, Allen Drive in Grand Island. Um, come in and see us. We've got a huge selection of grass and seed products, mowers, trimmers, everything you need to maintain your yard. As always, thanks for the tips, Rich Avronik from Home Depot in Grand Island. And Thank one of you. these days, he's going to bring me one of these orange smocks for <laughs> me to put on. <laughs> as well. Yeah, I'm, I could do that. I'm ready for it, Rich. I will Thank do you that. Very much. Stay with us. We're back with more News 5 today, right after this.